Thank you, Priyanka. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to be here today. Um, it's uh, multi-cloud is something near and dear to our heart, and I'm very happy to discuss the multi-cloud maturity model with you today. And before we dive in, let's make sure we're on the same page. According to Wikipedia, multi-cloud is the use of multiple cloud computing and storage services in a single heterogeneous architecture. It's good for Scrabble, this heterogeneous word. Um, in other words, multi-cloud means leveraging multiple cloud providers. And there's more of them now. Like in the beginning, it was AWS was everywhere. March 2006, they launched. And since then, clouds have steadily gained traction across uh, end users, but also we've seen more of them. And when deploying an application, people want options, both for business and for technical reasons. So no one wants to be handcuffed to a cloud provider. And we're seeing both the spend on cloud increasing, but also companies embracing multiple clouds. Nowadays, most enterprises have four to five clouds in their organization. And 84% of companies have a multi-cloud strategy. All this to say is that multi-cloud is becoming very, very important for the enterprise. And there's different reasons for this trend. One of the reasons are technical reasons. If you want to use Lambda or uh, something else, DynamoDB, for example, it's only available on AWS. If you want to use BigQuery, it's only available on GCP. There's also negotiating with the cloud providers. If you don't have a multi-cloud strategy, you're going to have a much harder time negotiating rates with your cloud provider. And there's the practicality of if you acquire a company and they're already building their application on a separate cloud, they're using services that are specific food for that cloud, people don't want to move off. And then last but not, certainly not least, if you're a SaaS provider and you offer services, some of your customers might be competing with the cloud you're hosting your software on. So it helps to be able to shift workloads to different clouds for different customers. Another thing that's happening is that open source is eating infrastructure software. In the past, we had proprietary technologies. And cloud started off as proprietary technologies. But these days, you have things like Apache, Kafka, Redis, Elastic. And those are being offered as a service by the clouds, but at the same time, they're open source, open core. And in the future, the management layer for making projects multi-cloud is very likely to have a multi-cloud foundation. Not in the least, because it's going to be based on Kubernetes. It's a great equalizer for multi-cloud. It's the best way to deploy and operate containerized applications. It gives you a common interface to different cloud providers. And it's loved by developers and operations. And I hope everyone in this room, because we're here for KubeCon, right? Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, there's various degrees of maturity when it comes to multi-cloud applications. In my talk today, I want to talk about what those are and how to uh, get from one to the next. And there will be lots of talks today that talk about increasing your maturity for multi-cloud. In the beginning, there was only monocloud. You selected one cloud. And not too long ago, that was what everyone said you should do. You should go all in on one cloud, move up all your applications from your data centers in the other cloud, and use just one. And then we figured that it was better that to use multiple clouds. But different clouds provided different workflows, sometimes even different tooling. So the, the way you worked was specific to that cloud. Things like ensuring security, productivity statistics, things like that were specific to that cloud. And different teams would work in different ways. And this impeded collaboration. And it led to a loss of velocity. We're now moving to cloud independent processes that enable workflow portability. And most companies, I think, if you look at enterprises, most of them are now aiming for this. At GitLab, we have customers like Delta Airlines and Genworth who have achieved this 
And you'll hear from Genworth today later in the talk sessions. After workflow, workflow portability comes application portability. It means that your application can de be deployed to any cloud. It's not necessarily running on multiple clouds at the same time, but you're not using any services that are specific to a certain cloud. You'll see a demo of this today of GitLab and a product called Crossplane that enables this, and that should be really exciting. After the next step, after workflow, uh, workload portability and application portability, is disaster recovery portability. It means your application can fail over to another cloud with limited downtime. After that, you get workload portability. GitLab.com doesn't have workload portability for everything, but for example, for the CI component, running the CI workloads, we used to balance between multiple cloud providers. And the final and highest stage of portability is data portability, which means that not only your compute, your workload is happening at multiple clouds, but even your data is synchronized across multiple clouds. And there's a demo coming up by Yugabyte today who will talk about how they can achieve that. So to recap, we're going from mono cloud to multiple clouds, but different processes, same processes, being able to deploy an app to different clouds, live failing over the app, having the compute run on multiple clouds, and then having the data run on multiple clouds. And our goal today is to share the strategies to be successful in maturing your multi-cloud implementation. So to provide an avenue for end users and cloud providers to come together and make this revolution happen. There's gonna be more and more uh, multiple demos today, so you'll be able to see the stages at work. And I wanna call out again the application portability demo. I'm proud to say that uh, GitLab and Crossplane in a demo is something we worked on together to have here for you uh, today. Priyanka already mentioned the on-conference tonight, so after the programming, we move to Hard Rock Cafe and there'll be food and drinks and tables for everyone to get together. Uh, I wanna say thank you, and I'd love to take any questions if there are any. Thank you very much for your attention. Three we can take about three questions. Just raise your hand and I'll be the mic runner. But come on, somebody has to. All right, there we go. Good job. Hi. Uh, I've heard some confusion around whether something, uh, an infrastructure is multi cloud if it's only using uh, different virtual machines or different container technologies on different clouds and how specific SaaS services fall into that. Um, there seems to be some confusion on Twitter in particular, like what does it mean to be multi-cloud when you're thinking about the different layers of as a service systems? And uh, yeah, what's your perspective on how people should differentiate and, and think about their journey in this model? Yeah, thanks for that. Um, Multi-cloud is like an umbrella term. Um, and this maturity model I presented here is one way to look at, to look at it. Um, the reality of it is even more complex. Like how do you call something like um, Elasticsearch or Kafka that is provisioned as a service by the provider? Like you can buy it from Confluent or Elastic Inc. They will provision it for you and then you do VPC peering to kind of link it to your own service. Um, I don't know like, exactly how you would define that. Um, but I, I think we're starting to see that a multi-cloud is more than running on multiple cloud. It also means how portable is it? If you, as a company, use three clouds, um, but you have different processes and different ways to work on every cloud, and every application is written specific to any cloud, and you never move them between, Clouds, like you have a low level of maturity. And I, I, I think we're gonna see companies be more articulate about this. Uh, this is an attempt, this uh, maturity model is an attempt to give us kind of the naming for that. Uh, it's uh, inspired by uh, Mitchell from HashiCorp. He talked about it at a conference. And I, um, 
added a few stages to it. Let's see if this, this is a good way to talk about it, but I'm open to suggestions to further improve it. Great, other questions? Yes, I'll hold you over. Yeah, I saw VMware on one of your slides. So do you, do you see a lot of people sort of multi-clouding across their data center and providers? Or where do you see the trend lines there? Yeah, I, I think VMware is doing a super good job. Uh, like in the last half year, year of embracing uh, multi-cloud, you, you got to recognize that almost every enterprise is running a giant VMware installation. And they're now fully embracing Kubernetes as the next avenue. And they give you a dashboard that both includes your VMware virtual machines and Kubernetes. And I think that's attractive because most enterprises are not going to move off their virtual machines-based infrastructure for the next 10 years. So a Kubernetes-only dashboard will always have only half of what they need. So I'm seeing a lot of traction. And they seem to be very genuine in their embrace now of Kubernetes. And I think with the acquisition of Pivotal, uh, we're going to see a lot of exciting products coming out from them. And I think yeah, in the West, we basically have these. These are the top five, like IBM Red Hat, um, VMware Pivotal, and the three hyperclouds uh, seem to be the, the dominant players. And then if you include the ESA, it will be Alibaba. Awesome. We have time for one more. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, wait. Was there somebody? Yeah. Okay, great. I'll repeat the question. Do you think the hyperclouds will cooperate with the multi-cloud um, trend? That's a great question. I, uh, <laughs> I think there's some hesitance. Um, there's, uh, there's a hypercloud that recently at a, one of their events uh, recommended people to not talk about multi-cloud too much. Um, so, I think it's it's interesting. Like you saw, you saw the applause at the beginning. Like everyone's excited to be here today. Like by the time what we're going to talk about today is kind of getting banned at other events, you know you're in the right place. <laughs> um, but I I do think I do think the the hypercloud will embrace this. In the end, um, if you're looking at um, the, there's basically three hyperclouds. It takes a massive investment to kind of do the data center architecture, to do the, the hypervisors, to do all the other stuff they're doing. There's not going to be a lot of them, and it, it's probably always going to be a great business, even with hyperclouds, so, with multi clouds. So I, I don't, I think they'll embrace it, but I think uh, there's a lot of work for us to do here today to bring it a bit further along. Yeah, to add to that, I had the same question. And so in the agenda today, later in the day, we have a panel with cloud providers on it uh, t telling us about their take on multi-cloud. Um, thank you so much, Sid. That was amazing. Thank you.